Oh. My. I can't believe that's holding. Alright, here we go. This chain's probably 30 pounds. This got to break. Oh. Good afternoon, guys. My name is Brandon, and today I'm going to show you everything that you need to know to make your first cast iron repair. Stick around. I was actually quite surprised that that pan didn't shatter in a thousand pieces when it went from that hot grill into that cold water. But oh well, we finally got it to crack and we got it to crack good. In order to determine how you're going to repair this, you got to figure it out what it is you're working with. There are five ways to determine what this material is. The first one we're going to cover was easy. It said right on the label what it was. It said it was cast iron. But if the part doesn't say cast iron on it, you're going to have to figure it out yourself. The second way of determining it if is if it's broken you can look at the grain structure so you take a look at that grain structure it's probably gray cast iron is what I'm guessing that's the most common and here's a look at the handle piece let's compare that to what uh, basic steel would look like now here I have a piece of steel that I just bent back and forth eventually until it failed now you can see how the grain structure on the steel looks nothing like the grain structure on the cast iron. The third method is going to be a spark test. I'm going to start out by grinding here. What I want you to do is watch the color in the shape of the sparks. You'll see that on cast iron that the color uh, tends to be the brightest at the end of the spark. And then I'm going to grind my steel uh, table here and you'll see that it's bright orangey and the sparks develop right basically at the grinding wheel and they extend out. If you're trying to determine if your part is cast iron or cast steel, here's a great example. Cast steel will look like this, the same as mild steel. The sparks originate at the abrasive disc and work outwards versus cast iron. They seem to originate outwards. The fourth way to determine if your part is cast iron or steel is to drill it. Drilling cast iron looks completely different than drilling cast steel. Let's take a look. As you can see, we have a long crack that extends the length of this. We have to stop drill this uh, to prevent this crack from continuing on. If you just weld this up, this crack will continue to migrate outwards. Take a look at that. It's more of a filing than a chip. Very short, almost looks graphite-y. Um, very different than a, than a steel chip. Let's drill some steel and compare it. So here's our mild steel and this is the material that it removed from it. You can see the bright and shiny curly cues. They look nothing like the powdered dust that came out of that hole. And the fifth and final test is called a file test. What you're going to do is you're going to take a file and just run it on the edge of your, of your material piece. That bit right in, that's doing a nice job of filing. Yep, that's cutting, cutting right in as it should. Now my next step is to put a blast tack. I'm at about 150 amps right on the corner there. Now, if this is cast iron, this file will skate right across that because the heat will cause the metal in the cast iron to harden. It's 
skating right across. It's not even touching it. It's just like a uh, ball bearing. Look at it. Not even touching it. So I feel pretty confident that the five tests that we just talked about have determined this to be cast iron. But for those of you that don't believe any of these tests, feel free to write down into the comment section that it is absolutely without a doubt cast steel. <laughs> those new pans are all cast steel. It's the older stuff that was cast iron. Your spark test was wrong. My uncle Skeeter welded this once with MIG wire. It has to be cast steel. Let's get going guys. Let's get this thing welded up. So now that we've identified that it's cast iron that we're working with, now we've got to uh, go about repairing it. So here's one type of repair. So we're going to start with this one, which is the handle. And then we have another type of repair, which is a complete blown out section in the bottom with a crack that extends outward. So we're going to talk about each differently because they're each their own separate different type of repair. And we'll start with repairing the handle first. So that brings us to joint preparation. This is ideally kind of what you're looking for. Uh, just bevel it out a little bit and then your weld will just kind of fill in like that. So that's, that's the idea of what you're trying to do. Let's get going. The welding portion of any repair like this is really the smallest part of the step. It's kind of like painting. Uh, you know, it's all prep work that leads up to the painting. Well, that's what welding is here. The more time you spend on good fit up and joint preparation, the better job you're going to get overall when it comes time to weld it up. So you just want to try to do a good job and get a nice decent uh, fit up and try to get the joint prepped as close as you can to the diagram that I, that I showed you. So for this repair, we're going to be using some 332nd uh, muggy weld rods and we're going to be TIG welding it. Now, these rods can be used with a uh, stick welder or TIG welding it. And they say to take the rod and drop it in a pan of water. Now, nickel is a carcinogen. This is just a demonstration to show you how to make a repair. It just happens to be on a pan. But I would not use nickel rods uh, to allow my food to contact it. Some people have skin allergies with nickel, so for me, I'm going to uh, just use latex gloves. I'm not going to touch the rods with my bare hands, uh, and you want to be careful about breathing the smoke again so you don't get poisoned with the, uh, with the nickel fumes. You want to do this in a well-ventilated area. And by removing this coating under water, uh, which this is the flux coating, I don't know what's in it, but... Um, you're kind of eliminating that uh, from going into the air as well, the dust. There, now our stick welding electrode is down to a bare rod, ready to TIG weld. This repair is going to involve a preheat, a post heat, and a cool down. And what I like to do is tack the pieces together before it goes into the preheat. That way when it comes out, I'm not struggling and wrestling with it, trying to get all my uh, pieces to line up. So we're just gonna get some small tacks on this piece and get it together. We're using three 30 seconds rods, so we're gonna go right to the low end of that. We're gonna go 50 amps. We'll turn on our welder. Get our gas going. You always want to stand off to the side and open your argon tank all the way. This is straight argon. And we said we were going to set it for 50 amps. So it's right about there. And we're going to keep our uh, down slope and post flow at the minimum right now because we're just doing tacks. Now all you're looking to do here is just get a tack on it to get that handle held on it so we're not fighting with it when it comes out of the heat. Uh, the weld or the tack could very well crack. That's no big deal because we are welding it cold here. There's no preheat in it. And if it cracks, it's probably going to crack as it's cooling down. But uh, Just as long as the handle's on it when it comes out of the heat, that's really all we care about. So we've got it all held on there. It's tacked on. Time to throw it in the... Uh, I'm just using the grill here and the idea is, is to try to get it up to around 500 degrees now I'm just gonna TIG up little short sections just like we did on that exhaust manifold 
I'll put a link to that video up above. And uh, then we're just gonna peen it. I'm gonna kind of move around, try to keep heat in the part. I'm using just enough heat on my welder settings so that I can get the material to flow. That's the key to, to well, one of the keys to welding cast iron. You don't want to put a ton of heat in it. Use just enough amperage to get the job done. And for here, I'm using just enough amperage to get this to flow. I think it settled right around 55 amps is where we're at. Um, doing little short welds. I'm peening in between and the peening is helping to relieve and reduce some of the stress uh, between the base metal and the filler metal or the weld metal that we're putting in here. And I really had no issues whatsoever. Now you will get a little bit of porosity when you weld cast iron. It's expected and you'll see it here shortly once I grind this out. Uh, you're going to get little pinholes and that is some of the trash that's in the cast iron floating to the top. Like I said, it's expected. Uh, cast iron is not an overly clean material. You're going to get it. It's unavoidable. And there's the finished weld. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to get this thing buried, put it in some sand, uh, let it sit for a while until it's completely cool. All right, so it's been sitting for several hours, and how do you know when it's okay to take it out? Uh, just carefully stick your finger into the sand and find where your part is. And if you still have heat in it, then you're going to want to leave it. So this has been in there for probably four hours, and there's no heat that I can notice in it whatsoever. So far, so good. Looks good to me. I do not see any cracking. And if it really mattered to you and it was upsetting, you could always uh, V that out on the back side, fill that in as well, and grind it flush. But, you know, if this was an engine block or, you know, something along those lines, you would not be able to get both sides of it. So that's, that's pretty much what you'd be having on the inside or outside or however, whichever side, the opposite side of your weld. So, there it is. So, yeah, successful repair. Let me grind this down and we'll uh, take a better look at it. And here we go. I got it all ground down. Now you can see, let me get really close. You can see a few like worm holes in there. That's expected. Uh, that's what cast iron does. It's really porous. A lot of the trash just kind of floats to the top. If it bothered you, you could always go back over it um, and fill it in. Guys, I just had an idea. Rather than patch up that hole in the bottom, I think I'm going to skip that and uh, we're going to try something. I think this is going to be kind of fun and interesting because I'm never going to cook on this because it is nickel rod and nickel is a carcinogen like I just mentioned. So let's try something. Let's do some testing on this thing. Have you guys ever wondered how strong a cast iron repair is? Well, we're going to find out. I just want to smash my feet. Wow. You think this is going to do it? Oh my god, guys, I can't believe this thing is still holding. <coughs> I'm afraid I'm going to hurt my feet. <laughs> oh my god. So if anybody's doubting whether or not this type of weld is strong on cast iron, hopefully this is uh, curing any of those myths. I can't believe this. We're running out of scrap here in a minute. Oh, 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 oh. Isn't this a game where you just keep stacking stuff until something breaks? Look at that. Would you just look at it? Oh my. I can't believe that's holding. All right, here we go. <laughs> oh. Wow. This chain's probably 30 pounds. This got to break. It 
didn't break. All right, it's starting to fail. Let me, uh, I don't know if you can see it right along there. It's got a crack in it. It's starting to fit. We're going to break this. We're breaking this one way or another. All right, guys, I'm stacked back up. Now I got a whole nother bucket of scrap, which is about 30 more pounds. We're going to start hanging that off the end of the pan. This should finish it right here. Oh my god, I can't believe. I don't know if we're going to be able to break this, guys. There, I forced it. Take a look. So our handle broke off. That's impressive. Look at that. It took out the parent metal before the weld broke in that area. That's impressive. Let's see how much all this stuff weighs. So what do you guys think? Did this surprise you or what? I know it did me. I thought for sure probably just the uh, exhaust manifold and that big block of steel that I put on it in the very beginning was going to be enough to do it. But it actually took this whole bucket. Look at that. 114.6 pounds we had hanging off that pan. So there's our test guys. 114.6 pounds or 51.98 kilograms. I am thoroughly impressed. You can see here that it didn't really break on even on our cut. In places it did, but it ripped the parent metal away in a lot of it. So what do you guys think? Did that test surprise you of how much weight that held? I can't believe it. I'm actually completely blown away. I would have thought it would have uh, broken well, well, well before that. So hopefully, you guys now after seeing this I know I'm surprised that after seeing this that you'll feel confident that if you need to do a cast iron repair and you follow just some basic steps that you'll have a decent repair you'll have a good repair so that's gonna conclude this episode guys it's already getting way too long I'm not gonna bother patch the bottom of that pan unless that's something that you're really interested in seeing maybe it'll be a good future episode. I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. Until next week, stay safe everyone. Have a good day. Oh, and if you guys want to find out what I'm working on before it even makes it up to YouTube, you guys can catch me on Instagram and on Facebook. Thanks guys. Have a good day. See ya.